Vice President Harris has reportedly narrowed down her VP picks and expects to choose a running mate before the DNC, which happens next month, in a few weeks. So let's take a look at her reported contenders. First, you have Arizona Senator Mark Kelly. Here's his information. Former astronaut, combat veteran married to Gabby Giffords, supports increased border security. That's now. He's flipped on this because he knew that was a problem. His bipartisan legislation, but he's a little dubious. Uh, he has a dubious record on guns and on the border. He voted with Joe Biden 95.5 percent of the time. In 2020, he flipped Arizona's Senate blue in special election following Senator John McCain's death. Okay, then over here we have Josh Shapiro. He's Pennsylvania's governor. In 2022, he won PA governor by 15 points and then five points back in 2020. But keep in mind, that's when he ran. Mastrianos was running against him, and Mastrianos said absolute, absolutely zero zero exceptions when it comes to abortion, even if the woman will die, even if the woman is raped. So we think that's why he won by so many points. In 2016, he won the PA Attorney General's office. He was backed by President Obama. Approval rating has never fallen below 50 percent and a vocal supporter of Israel. And this is a problem for the squad. This angers the squad and the anti-Israel protesters. Now, let's look at Roy Cooper. He's in the great state of North Carolina. You can see he won six statewide elections in a row since 20. Uh, since 2000, known uh, Kamala Harris for 20 plus years and is a fellow state attorney general. He cannot run for North Carolina governor again, which uh, clearly he's auditioning for this position. He would love this position because he can't run again. 2020, Biden lost North Carolina by only 1%. But this is probably a stretch for the Democrats because Trump most likely will win in North Carolina. Let's look at Pete Buttigieg. He's the transportation secretary under Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. He's worked closely with Joe Biden since 2021. In 2020, he won the Iowa caucuses before pledging support for Joe Biden. And he's the former South Bend mayor credited with uh, revitalizing that city. But he is the transportation secretary. We know all the problems that have happened with the trains. We are clearly reminded of East Palestine. We know what's happened with bridges collapsing around our country and also with uh, Boeing's problems. So he could be a good choice, though, for the base. Now, let's look at Andy Bashir. He is Kentucky's governor. And here's his record. He's the son of the former Kentucky governor, Steve Bashir. He has won three elections in deep red state, in the deep red state, as a Democrat. He would be the second Rust Belt politician on the ballot. And in January, he launched the PAC for swing state Dems. He obviously is auditioning um, for this position as well. He wrote on X, no matter what the future holds, Kentucky is my home. But the odds of Trump losing in Kentucky close to zero at this point. OK, then you have Tim Waltz. He's the Minnesota governor. He chairs the Democratic Governors Association. In 2020, he was uh, governor during George Floyd's death and the BLM riots former school teacher, union member, and U.S. Army reservist. But this would be a very defensive move. This would mean that Minnesota is definitely in play. And even Mondell beat Reagan in Minnesota. Um, most likely, a Democrat will win in this state. But Trump got very, very close in 2016. So let's bring in our Fox News contributor. We have Mark Thiessen with us this morning. Good morning to you, Mark. Good morning, Ainsley. Good morning. OK, who do you think will win and why? Uh, it's probably going to be Mark Kelly would be the most likely because uh, Arizona is a key swing state and uh, she knows him from her time in the Senate. Mm -hmm. uh, it probably would be one of the three moderate swing state governors. Look, she is the most left wing candidate of any party in modern history, as yes. you've been explaining all, all morning. And so she doesn't unlike Biden, she didn't have a, doesn't have a problem with her left wing base. She doesn't need Tim Waltz, who's a, a liberal from Minnesota, to balance out her ticket. She needs to balance out her ticket with some with a with a swing moderate swing state state governor in a state that she needs to win. So Arizona is one. Pennsylvania is another. North Carolina, if she could flip North Carolina, that would make Trump's path to the White House very, very hard. So those those three are the most likely, and Kelly is probably the most likely of those three. Yeah, you have said all six uh, are far more electable than Kamala Harris. So why aren't they at the top of yeah. one of them at the top of the ticket? Well, that's the fascinating question, because you look at that 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 panoply of people you put out there, and at least three of them, maybe four, are much more electable than her nationally, much more able to appeal to swing voters. So why not? Well, what did you notice about all those faces? They're all white men. 
<laughs> Kamala Harris is the first black woman to lead a major party ticket. In the party of identity politics, are you really going to challenge the first black woman and knock her off the ticket uh, at that? Are you going to get it crosswise with the Congressional Black Caucus and, and, and Congressman James Clyburn? Why would you do that when, in, if Trump wins, in four years, it's an open seat? Um, and you can just run uh, for, for that seat outright. So why would you why would you not keep your powder dry? Maybe get picked for vice president where nobody's going to blame you if you lose, but you get to raise your national profile. And the other thing, by the way, Ansley, the fact that they're not running shows this whole th this whole thing that the Democrats think Donald Trump is a threat to democracy is is untrue. If they thought Donald Trump was a threat to democracy, they'd be running right now because there won't be an election in four years. Mm. <laughs> so yeah. they all seem pretty confident that our democracy is going to be just fine after four years of Donald Trump, and they'll be able to sit, keep their powder dry and run in four years. All right. Well, we'll see. The Fox News polling shows it's a horse race. They're tied in Michigan and Pennsylvania. Yeah. Trump's ahead by one point in Wisconsin, and Kamala Harris is ahead in Minnesota by six points. Mark, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.